Hey guys, welcome to the HypeStore.com channel. This is a still MS180 and we are going to put a new carburetor on it. So this is a very popular homeowner saw. They're very easy to work on. So the first thing we're going to do is take off the blade just to get it out of the way so it's not flopping around out here. Real simple, just take off this cover with a little flip up lever. Then we can just loosen up our chain with the adjuster here, go the right way, and take off. Now we can take off this top cover. There's this little lever right here. You just flip it down, put your choke all the way down, pull the cover up and out. And then we've got access to our spark plug if we're trying to change it, air filter. So we'll take and take out the air filter. Pulls right out. Next thing we're going to want to do is take off these two nuts right here. You can't quite see that one back in there, right there. And the easiest way to do that is with a ratchet or straight driver like this. This one's a little bit of an angle there. But you can just get it in there. Probably a ratchet would be better for this one, but we'll just go with this since I have it in my hand. Drop the nut, no problem, we'll get that in a second. Pull your airbox off, just like that. And looks like a lot going on here, but let's get in close. So before we take, start taking this mess apart, let's flip this haul over on its side and go ahead and loosen up this, this other side cover because we are gonna have to take the gas tank out. So those nuts on the airbox were actually an eight millimeter, but these are actually Torx, and they are Torx 25, I believe. And there should be four of them. Now you won't have to necessarily empty your gas tank or your oil. It will make it easier. There's one up front here. You will need to take the caps off of your gas tank and oil tank just to uh, get the cover off. And there's one right here on the on the safety bar. Don't forget to take your caps off. Just get a little hook and pop those out. Now we can finish removing these screws if we want. And the three socket headed screws that have the torque sockets, they're all the same length so you're not going to get those mixed up and the one that goes on the safety bar is just a little dome screw, so easy to keep those straight. I like to put all mine in a little tin of some sort just to keep them all together so don't get lost. Now we should be able to pull this off. It's a little tricky. I'm gonna get the bar off first. There we go. All right. You just kind of got to hold your tongue in the right direction. So I'm going to go ahead and put the caps back on just to keep debris out while I'm working on this because as you see there's quite a bit of debris down in this thing. It's a chainsaw after all. Go ahead and wipe it down a little bit. Wipe our area down. Now as you'll see, the gas tank is just loose in there now. So as we pull the carburetor out, we'll be able to take the rest of it out. So you can see this lever here, this is your trigger lever. So what you want to do is push your throttle linkage back and then just kind of pull that lever out of it. Just like that. So you can see that there's a little slot right here. That's where that lever is going to go into. Always a good idea if you've not worked on these before to go ahead and take pictures as many as you can. So when you're going to put it back in, you just put it in that slot and you're ready to go. Take it out, like I say, pull the throttle linkage forward and just pull it out. Get to that point and then you're actually going to be loose in there. So we've got our linkage here. Just leave that to the side. No need to remove that right now. Need to go to the other side. 
and we have our choke lever and as it moves up like this just pull it up this is also a little tricky but pull it up and move that lever out just like that and you can actually pull that all the way out just make sure you remember where that goes once we get that lever out of the way that lever goes right here we can then carefully flip up our choke out of this little recess I have to turn it a little bit careful with this you don't want to break this it just pops in there but uh, has a direction it wants to go let's put it that way there we go just kinda move that to the side and pull it out just like that so you can take this wire out if you want it's not really necessary it does just kinda slip in and out I just leave it in there take the choke lever kinda do it over the side bring it over the side like this so it's out of the way and then we can pull our carburetor off just fits find the handle kinda move our hose here the green hose to the side so that we can then pull the whole assembly out like that alright so we got a new carburetor here and as you can see the new hyper carburetor is basically identical except for it has a nice silver anodized coat on it. It's kind of hard to tell in the video probably but this is just a raw aluminum or whatever alloy they use. It's probably a zinc aluminum alloy and it is raw which means that over time it can get uh, crusty but as you can see with your new hyper carburetor it has a nice silver anodized covering on it which will help with corrosion resistance. So I always like to check around and make sure that the carburetors are identical because these come in lots of different variations make sure that all the ports are in the right spots and the linkages are the same and these are exactly the same so then we're just going to take off our old fuel line Oop, just like that and I did leave a little bit of fuel in there so it's going to leak a little bit now some of your kits that you get they may come with a new fuel line uh, the one I got for this demonstration video did not you just pull the rubber line out of here and it goes right back in of course we're going to put keep turning that over let's quit doing that it's also a good time to put a new filter on on the inside we're just going to put this back on here just like that turn it over make sure we don't have any leaks I'm just going to set it like that for a minute I'm just going to set it like that for a minute and what I want to make sure is that this line's not leaking at all and if I put it on this blue towel here I'll be able to see any spots leaking out so we'll just set it there for a second see if anything leaks out if not we're pretty much good to go so while we're waiting on this you might notice that your old carburetor has a little bit of gunk on the intake side this is where the air box would sit now if yours is showing this realize that that's getting into your engine so we want to make sure before we put this air cleaner back on that we clean it out thoroughly you can see that there's might be able to see that there's some gunk down in there there it is alright so now we can just kinda of stick our tank back in kinda of where it needs to go take our carburetor kinda of twist it around get it back in position make sure our tank is all seated back in there make sure everything is in its little track push our carburetor back all right, now we can put our choke lever back on. Make sure that your choke lever is underneath this rod. Because if you put it, if you put the rod underneath it, it won't work properly. Notice how the rod kind of curves around it. Stick it in the hole over here. Pull your little tab up. And snap it down in. Again, being careful with this little tab here because it, it is a little bit fragile feeling going to check this now notice how this contacts the wire you may have to pull your wire out a little bit if you put it put it in but you want to make sure that, that contacts because that is your kill switch Then we'll take our throttle lever pull our throttle all the way back pull our throttle all the way back lever up under there in the right position And there we are. Now we can put our choke lever on. Just pull it up like so. 
stick that guy in there like so and then move it around make sure it is working properly you might have to hold your carburetor back while you're doing this all right now that we got the throttle back in there we can make sure this works properly so so to put it in full choke squeeze the trigger pull full choke let go of the trigger that works put it in half choke and on this machine you pull it three times till you till it sort of starts and then you put it at half choke which is right there pull it till it starts click the button and it goes into the run position exactly what's supposed to happen just like that so I blow my air box out a little bit cleaned it up a little bit and we're just going to put it back on put our two nuts back on be careful with these when you're getting them started they're a little bit difficult to start bit annoying having to take these off every time you want to take the recoil cover off but that's the way it was designed so we'll get this back situated back in here just as fidgety to get it back in as it was to get it out but once you get it in the right position it will fall back in get our lever back on there we go get our screws back in give it a pull make sure we're all copacetic and we can put our cap back on These caps are a little annoying sometimes I don't know if you guys are have the same problem as I do but I often have problems getting especially this side lined up the way it's supposed to be it just seems to want to be too far over it's like we got it on that time Make sure our front. all right guys we're all buttoned up now I'm gonna put the bar back on and take it outside and give it a little bit of a run test. If you haven't seen our previous video on the Hyper Brand Chainsaw Chains, I've been using this one for a while now and it's working great. So I'll put a link in the description and I'll also try to put a link in the cards up here somewhere and at the end of the video. So stick around for that. Let's go take this out and give it a test run.